Hello everybody, it's just gone midnight here. Your friendly neighbourhood pinstripe is here to talk to you about the artillery. It's time for an artillery masterclass, or at least what I would technically call a masterclass. Basically all the things that I think about when I'm using the artillery and uh, we'll get on to a bit later how to deal with them um, using the obvious methods. But to start with, the artillery of course you have all these different shells which we've been over before. Uh, but the main thing that we're obviously going to be focusing on while we're in the artillery is distance. So the mine shell, gas shell, f rain shell, uh, shock shell and a thousand pound shell, they can all travel uh, the same distance. So if I were to use uh, the thousand pound shell and aim for this guy over here, go full power, the place where the shell lands that is roughly the distance that all of those shells combined, that is their maximum reach capacity. Look at him go. So again, if you don't believe me, mine shell, full power, we'll see exactly where it lands. And yeah, exactly the same spot. So the big difference, shock horror, is the long range shell, which as the name implies, we go full power, it will absolutely fly away. Uh, and that's where a lot of the confusion tends to lie with a lot of players. So we're going to be looking at how uh, you should assess uh, the situation that you're in with the artillery in terms of the landscape in front of you and the target that you're going for. Um, but I also want to start off by looking at the mine shells and the f range shell specifically. So both of these, considering that they sort of spurt out projectiles, or in, in some ways uh, just extra bits of shrapnel or what have you, um, you want to be looking for this kind of landscape in front of you to get the maximum out of this weapon or shell. So the f rain because everything kind of goes inwards uh, when you detonate it, I guess, uh, you want to be looking for that kind of dip in the landscape and where that uh, sapper is currently positioned is the perfect spot. So if we go for about, I don't know, 25% power, just try and detonate it over his head. See, there, that's, that's a bit short, but I can still get plenty of damage because he's basically in the bowl <laughs> with the flames. He is dead, uh, but we can probably do better than that, actually. So if we go for just a little bit more power, just so it detonates directly over his head, and yeah, we get <laughs> the complete annihilation. So if you're facing up against a pig, I mean, that guy had 150 health, so you can essentially kill anybody using uh, that shell in that kind of manner. Now, the mine shell is significantly more challenging to get the most out of because of how it works. So if we go the same amount of power, designated over his head, you can see that sometimes the mines will remain in the air and other times uh, they will all come to the ground uh, and either hide themselves because at the moment like those mines are in the air but did they explode? I don't know. Is anything even here? Yes. <laughs> yes it is. Yeah, mine shell can get a bit more power. That looks perfect. That's like dead center. But nothing else comes from it. You see what I mean though? It, it's so inconsistent. So this time they all land. But one mine is usually enough and you don't get the max damage uh, that you'd be expecting. Right? Because you, you'd want those extra bits of... Uh, those extra shells that come down to detonate and have that pig in the middle. So we need to, we need to kind of find an in-between... Uh, either the amount of power that I'm using or where he eventually lands. I mean, he took extra damage there, but it's not a huge amount. If we go too much and then let it drop. So, but then he's got like... Okay. No, see, it's just... It's not consistent enough. So the mine shell's not great. The shock shell is also not great. For obvious reasons. The shock shell is like too situational. You either have to have an artillery that's like close to the edge of the map, or in fact, actually, if we just like change places and like reposition a pig close to the edge, how often can we get someone to like be blasted off the map? All right, so we've got this guy right here. He's, I guess, as close to the edge as he can be. So if we position this 
kind of on one side of him. That looks decent. So, okay, it's fairly consistent, but I do also have the advantage of the <laughs> the very uh, handy slope. As for everything else, a uh, thousand pound shell, as we know, uh, we've talked about it many times before, but it gives you that 100 HP uh, in damage. And the gas shell is uh, surprisingly uh, effective. Like, you don't have to have it directly landing directly on the pig in order to poison them. And you can be a, they can be a fair distance away in order to get the poison. But the one thing that everyone always forgets as well uh, in relation to the long range shell uh, is that you are able to change the angle of the gun itself. Uh, you don't have the same uh, freedom as you would with uh, a grenade launcher or a bazooka or a mortar. Your angle is limited, which is uh, kind of a fair limitation of the artillery because you don't want it to act like a, a mortar placement where you can just angle it straight up into the air and have it land anywhere. Because for instance, if we're trying to target uh, the enemy grenadier over here, he's kind of got this hill in the way. So if I'm going to like roughly guess how much power I'd need, you can see there that lands on top of the hill. So again, okay, uh, about 70% of the power or, you know, like 68% landed on top of the hill. So if we need a little bit more than that or roughly just over, it's 17. So he is kind of protected from that. And that's really where you need to gauge your target's position and think, well, okay, given the, you know, the steepness of the hill, how effective is my artillery in that situation? So again, I'm, I'm curious to see if this one can be dropped in there. That one got just over. So again, it, it needs to be like minute in, <laughs> in how much power, like to the letter kind of thing. I'm going to get it. It is possible. Just needs to be just over. Yes, there it is. So you have to be pinpoint accurate. Uh, but I would say that that height is probably near the limit of what the artillery could produce. Because if, if this hill is any higher, then there's no way that you're getting the shell over it uh, and hitting the pig as well. Especially if he's positioned like far down. Not like flat on the ground like he is here because he's quite vulnerable but if you if you're looking for a defensive position against an artillery you kind of want to be like halfway up the hill halfway down just so that you've got the entire face of the cliff protecting you and yeah those of you who enjoy the low angles like me with the bazooka uh, you'll probably find a lot of these shots to be quite easy getting the full splash damage in the face but yeah the key thing i always remember when i'm using the long range shell yeah, is that more power never means uh, better uh, with the artillery. Essentially what I mean is that I'm always expecting myself to overshoot uh, with the artillery. Like I'm never looking to go full power unless I know that I'm shooting from one side of the map to the other. But it's like any other vehicle, I guess. Uh, th there's no magic trick to it, really. It's just about understanding... Uh, and getting that muscle memory down uh, like you do with any other weapon in the entire game. Okay, so we've now looked at the artillery from a blank slate uh, in that I've generated maps. So what about the actual maps that you'd be playing on if you were playing in competitive? Well, starting off, we are here on Chill Hill uh, where you have the option of two artilleries. Uh, I prefer to go for this one. Uh, because you are not shooting down, well, you're shooting downhill rather than uphill. Uh, you can see that that one is slightly lower, and usually the method here is uh, to start by using the F-Rain airstrike, uh, angling it down uh, a lot of the time, and just trying to get all of the damage onto the artillery, so that then when the next team take their turn, if they do go for said artillery, it will be either destroyed or fairly low on health. But you want to be starting, of course, with the Paratrooper. Uh, but you can see the positioning here of the spawns can be quite difficult because you, you very rarely have a line of sight on any pigs. So normally uh, I'd look for the orderlies or the grenadiers, someone of importance. 
Uh, but the benefit here on Chill Hill is that both of these artilleries are within range with the thousand pound shell. Uh, so I would be looking to go for about 90%. Uh, yeah, that's decent. 90%, 90, 95% uh, power gets me roughly 90 damage. Uh, and I could have easily have pushed him into the minefield there. As for the other perspective, I mean, I get the easier pick of the spawns here because I already have two players in view. I know I keep saying it, but again, it's one of those things that I just, I don't have a magical answer for uh, in relation to getting good with the artillery. It really just comes down to constant practice and understanding of the range, the limitations of each shell and when is the best time to use them. Uh, because in this situation, you know, you're mainly going to be using the long range shell. Uh, you want to get the thousand pound shell out the way early if you can, if there's pigs that are close by. Uh, because at the end of the day, those shells, the mine shell, the poison shell, the shock shell, all of those, uh, because they don't have the same range as the long range shell, uh, you know, you don't want to be risking, uh, you know, going full power on something that may not make it and you wasting your turn. So just understanding where the enemy are, when is the best chance to use it. That did surprisingly more damage than I thought it would. I was going to say it only did like 33 damage there, but then the additional 50 as well, so that went pretty well. In fact, this spawn over here is quite interesting. Uh, we've got an enemy pig next to the mines, so I'm going to be looking to drop this standard long range shell uh, net to the right of him actually, so that he lands into the left side mines. The splash damage is kind of inevitable on my own pig, but I can deal with that if I'm able to get a kill on a 150 full health sapper. So I'm going to be looking at about 15-20% power. Just something that just drops in, gets an... In fact, didn't even get the splash there on my own pig, which is perfect, but actually knocked him away from that. So maybe just short of where we had it before that's a bit too long this time so you can see the constant trial and error uh, with the artillery here even the, sim the the shots that you think would be simple with something like a bazooka end up being incredibly annoying <laughs> with such a fat shell so I just nudge it closer to him that looks that looks way better 57 pushes him into the mines and he still survives <laughs> But yeah, I guess my issue there was that I was aiming too far away from him. I want to be pushing it into him. Uh, that looks way better. There we go. 59 this time. Two mines. Slide back down. <laughs> Where's the slide? Either way, you get the picture. Uh, so if we've just done a complicated one, then the simple one would be this pig right in front of us. So again, that's not the same distance. So it's going to need a little bit more. But at the same time, the elevation and everything is near enough the same. You know, like he's he's not a massive distance away. He's like my pig right there. The red pig jet ski is roughly the same distance away as the uh, enemy paratrooper over here. So it just needs to be that little bit more, that little touch more for it to drop right on his head. And it, it's so satisfying every single time. Sometimes reading the terrain can be a lot easier in certain situations. So you can see here that my artillery has, even though he is like smushed up against the wall as much as possible, uh, and he's trying to use that to his advantage, uh, even though he may feel safe, I have the elevation uh, and I can keep the angle of my artillery uh, as high as possible so that it drops down again. If I were to angle this down that would make it a lot tougher for me to be able to gauge what is needed here. So if I go the same amount of power it's going to produce the, <laughs> the same result. So I guess in some situations angle isn't that important. I don't know. Like that was worse. I think that was maybe too much power. So if I go like middle, less power, it travels further, obviously. 
because physics, if I angle it all the way down and then go too little, angle it all the way down and go the same amount that we did before. 28. Did I just did I just fluke that? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know, but nine times out of ten, I will keep my angle the same. I won't bother with changing my angle unless I have a clear, direct sight of the pig. So I'll just keep it as high as I can and just let the shell do the work for me. The other thing you don't want to do is uh, use the mine shell or the airframe. I mean, you saw me do it earlier with the airframe, but you really don't want to be using the mine shell unless absolutely necessary, unless it's the best situation. If you don't have a sight line and you don't know the terrain around the pig that you are targeting, then don't bother using the mine shell. Unless, of course, it's like the last shell that you have in your arsenal, then fair enough. But even then, at full power, it didn't even reach it. So you could you could use the mine shell and think, okay, I can get some damage, but then you might mess up the power. The one thing that isn't really looked at in Hogs of War that much is area denial. So, like, I could block this pig from leaving that area. Unless, of course, he bounces out of it now. Of, of course he does. <laughs> but yeah, again, it's very circumstantial, but if you're able to deny a certain area uh, from a pig, say, being able to traverse a certain distance or being able to leave a certain area, then that would be huge. Again, that spawn point there with that gunner is probably the best example of that because now, because he can't see the mines, he takes the risk of being like, all right, I'll try and make my way through it and be able to have access to the rest of the map or I'm trapped here next to this minefield with another minefield next to me. Whoa, there's a bird coming for the camera. <laughs> what was that? Terrifying. 2D birds, man. Scary shit. So yeah, this distance may look perfect for the, the mine shell. Blasting it 100% and it just makes it. But again, that's usually going to be the end of the mine shell, right? You'll get the 25 damage, but then not much else will happen uh, from that detonation. In fact, the only other time I can see the mine shell being useful is if you use it for area denial plus vehicle entry denial and what i mean by that is uh if you happen to be playing on a map that had both an artillery and a tank you could plant the mines onto the tank to avoid any players from uh, stepping into the tank for instance but again because competitively we don't have any maps that contain both artilleries and tanks it's kind of void all right well we've talked to death about every single shell and I've roughly said, you know, that practice makes perfect. You need to get to uh, know each shell, what its limitations are, how much it can do. So how do you deal with said artilleries? Well, considering that this is the only competitive map that we have that contains artilleries, you want to be looking to your main man over there, stage left, the sapper and the introduction of the shrapnel grenade. So the shrapnel grenade is incredibly important against vehicles because of, well, the shrapnel. If you've never used it before, it can do a heap of damage. Uh, but it is actually possible to destroy a full health artillery with just a single shrapnel grenade. And that's kind of what we're going to investigate here because we, I've seen Candyman do it before. Uh, so it is indeed possible. Uh, but what kind of areas should you be looking for on the artillery itself? Essentially what you want to be doing is looking to wedge uh, the grenade uh, under the artillery. Now, it's all very well and good being able to throw it and get those bits of shrapnel to deal huge amounts of damage. But how exactly do you get the most out of every single piece of shrapnel debris so I mean if I I've just thrown it there how much damage did that do so it's down to 72 health so we did like 128 damage I still feel like it's possible to do better than that though so what would be key for dealing full full damage onto the artillery we're gonna keep 
attempting and seeing if we can come up with that magic number and the area to aim for. Again, you can see I'm trying to throw it, uh, as I said before, under almost the artillery. That seemed better, I think. How much was it that time? 31, so almost 170 damage. So yeah, you want to be aiming for, like if it's at an angle like this, you want to be aiming for the lowest panel there that you can see. Uh, which is kind of like a, a circle shape. Uh, every single vehicle has it. Uh, well, the pillbox and uh, artillery have that little circle underneath it uh, to allow it to rotate. So if you aim for that panel, just wedge it under there, you can get a huge amount of damage. And I mean, it's not going to be possible to get the full 200 but if you can get like 150 uh, even 170 like I almost did then then you're gonna be in a very positive spot uh, going into the rest of the round uh, especially if you're going second on chill hill because if your enemy is able to uh, take the artillery first damage it or even destroy the other artillery you're gonna be very heavily relying on your sapper to come up with the goods to deal damage onto the artillery as soon as possible. But yeah, that is it for my uh, quote-unquote masterclass in terms of artilleries. Hope you guys have enjoyed and hopefully learned something along the way. Uh, it's been fun. Um, I would look at other maps uh, like uh, Dam Busters, but we don't actually use that anymore in competitive, so I don't really see how it can be that helpful. I just wish that uh, artilleries were more prevalent in the uh, multiplayer realm other than generated maps because yeah they're fun on generated maps but it's not quite the same if we're talking in competitive terms but either way let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments i love to hear from you guys as always and in the meantime i will catch you later for the next one